أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Moving on, what are a dog's best friend traits? What are a dog's best friend traits? A dog will match your energy. A dog matches your energy. If you are angry at someone, that dog is angry at someone. If you are elated to see someone and you are happy to see someone, that dog too will be happy to see someone. A dog matches your energy. I'm listening to a uh, Bill Burr talk about how this dog trainer, because this dog almost nipped at someone when he was walking his dog, he had a pit bull rescue. And he, uh, the trainer told him, listen, this dog matches your energy. So if you're yelling at the referee on the TV, if the dog, if you're walking the dog and the dog sees anything similar to that referee, he may lunge at that referee because you're angry at that referee. Now, this is how uh, policemen will say that domestic calls are the most dangerous ones. Because in a woman's nature, even if she called the police on you, if the police starts roughing you up, her nature is to oppose the police. And they come across this situation in many different scenarios. And the police will tell you the most uh, dangerous call is a domestic call. If the husband calls on the wife or the wife calls on the husband, you know, you never know if they will shoot or stab you for roughing up their wife or husband. So this is the close relationship between the husband uh, and the wife, just as when Abu Bakr became angry with Aisha, his daughter, he, he raised his hand to strike her and she hid behind the Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is indeed a father who raised his daughter and protected her and maintained her all her life. But when she became married to the Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu he became the protector, he became the maintainer, and he even surpassed and took over the father's duty, which is a lifetime duty for a father. But nevertheless, she hid behind the Rasul for protection from her own father. So uh, moving on, a dog's best friend traits or matching energy. The next one, the, the dog is always happy to see you. If you left for 10 days, 10 years, if you left for 10 minutes, the dog has that same energy, always happy to see you. If you had a bad day at work and you come home, a dog can make it better. Now, we're not talking about house dogs. As Muslims, we don't do house dogs. But I can guarantee you my dog uh, whose job is only to bark. They bark, I kill. You know, my dog's duty is to bark and I kill. So my dog my dog is letting me know when my wife drives up, when my kids are approaching, uh, when, when, when the UPS guy is here, the Amazon guy is delivering something. My dog lets me know, you know. My dog lets me know. So, uh, but with the dog, the dog is always happy to see you, okay? Bad day at work, they ease that tension. They have a thing called service dogs. For people that have PTSD and other types of uh, social anxieties and what have you, they have a thing called service dogs. These dogs are there to comfort. So if a woman wants to be uh, or take over the role of man's best friend, they have to be like many of the good women of the past and many good women today. They have to become a comfort, but they have to agree to become a comfort. And it has it cannot be something that's forced upon them or it would not be genuine and it would not last. A dog is domesticatable, descendant of the wolf, wild animal. But a dog is domesticatable. So if a woman was raised uh, as a rescue, had some trauma, had some abandonment issues, uh, she should be domesticatable as she finds a man that's willing to deal with her. She should basically just uh, mold herself after his example and his desires. A woman should ask him, what do you want in this and that regard? And she should be able to mold herself after that. A woman should be whatever that, whatever her current husband wants her to be. Of course, as Muslim within the confines of what is halal or what is what is permissible, Mubah. 
but not anything haram. But she should try to acquiesce and try to uh, make herself, you know, accommodating and agreeable toward her husband uh, if she wants to assume the title of man's best friend. Also, the dog is dependent. The dog is dependent, but reciprocal. The dog is dependent, but reciprocal, meaning that, yes, the dog depends on you, but the dog has so many qualities that you also benefit from. And prior, I've named a few. Scientifically, the mere presence of man's best friend fights stress. Again, I mentioned service dogs, so on and so forth. These things fight stress versus an individual that wants to become or say they should be the husband's best friend, but they are often premeditative causes of stress, meaning I am going to make him miserable. I am going to do this. I am going to do that with, with full intention. And this is not the role of a wife. It is not the role of a best friend, certainly not the role of man's best friend. Man's best friend currently of the animal kingdom loves you as you are. We're not saying that there is no room for improvement. We're not saying that you should be a slouch or a bum and a woman should love you that way. No, we're not saying that. We're saying that if you are five foot two or six foot two, a dog loves you as you are. If you are, uh, if you can't jump as high, if you're not as handy around the home, you know, because you are in the uh, white collar uh uh, work work sphere you know a dog loves you as you are if you are poor or rich a dog loves you as you are so if a woman is to assume the title of man's best friend she must become more agreeable and and not stress you out yes encourage you to do better but love you as you are this man assumed you this man is the prize he assumes you as a, a dependent and even if you have more money than him you still can't protect him you still don't become his protector so therefore he has a degree above you in any case so you should be uh more appreciative and you should reciprocate what he is offering you lastly i'll mention that a dog is incapable of betrayal a dog is incapable of betrayal of course, as human beings, we have akal, we have intellect, rationale, we have a mind, and, and dogs don't have that. Dog is fully off of instinct and survival mode, okay? So, yes, uh, human beings are capable of betraying, but uh, oftentimes what we find with the, with the creature that is advocating or petitioning to become man's best friend or saying that they should be a husband's best friend above all else and, and anyone else, this individual often, and this is not all of them, I don't know the percentages, but this individual often will betray, they will betray, and a dog is not capable of betrayal. So we're not saying that you ought to abandon your uncle and become dog-like. We're saying that uh, you should not look for opportunities to betray. My dog happens to be female, uh, Harissa. She uh, was trained not to go past the threshold of the gate. I can leave the gate wide open. I can leave for hours, come back. She's not allowed to go past the threshold of the gate, whether she sees another cat or a dog or human. She's not allowed to go past the threshold. I noticed that the length of her body from nose to tail, she'll now go outside the threshold of the gate. Now, I don't walk this dog because you walk a dog. You can't have a guard dog that, that you walk. Uh, they don't work like that. They become territorial. They urinate in different places and their territory will expand. So you want to keep them uh, within the confines of where you want them to guard and allow them to, you know, uh, uh, guard that place and not explore beyond that. So she'll now come outside the gate from nose to tail length. And I say, Harasa, get back in that gate. And she'll run back in the gate. 
Well, it's the same way uh, a human being, man or woman, are not infallible. So they'll make mistakes. But my best friend, Hadassah, my dog, my guard dog, is able to take directions without barking back at me. This is a quality that is very desirable. Now, uh, one of my best, you know, uh, ex-wives was she was my best friend, and she would balance my energy. I'm yelling at her, "Let's go! You're making me late. We had to be somewhere. You're in the mirror too long, so on and so forth." And she just looked at me, and she put her stuff up, and she walked out and got inside the truck, and I got in the truck. And I'm still mad. I'm still barking. And she's just sitting there looking straight forward, not saying anything back to me. Pretty soon, I calm down. And I turned to her and I said, I love you. You know, because she didn't match my masculine energy. So that one, I can say, was my best friend. I can say that because she didn't match my masculine energy. She balanced me. Okay? She balanced me out. And uh, the last thing I'll mention so if the fairer sex, which is the female, wants to be or wants to assume the title of man's best friend, she must study the animal kingdom, the aspect of which animal is uh, or holds the title of man's best friend, study that animal and learn of the positive uh, human traits that they could adopt in order to assume that title. I know the language may not be uh, preferable. It may seem harsh while I'm saying dog, I'm saying animal kingdom, so on and so forth, but the point is made. And for those that are intellectual, they'll understand the point and they won't find uh, hiccups and uh, verbiage uh, and make that all about what the topic is. You want to be your husband's best friend? Become more like the one that holds the title of man's best friend, which is the dog.